Hi friends, it's Marie at Living Felt, and today we have a sweet little tutorial for you by my friend Don Edwards on wet felting this cracked mud vessel. This tutorial is a part of a series that Don and I filmed together on sampling for success. She made this adorable cracked mud vessel by bringing together a few of the techniques that we explored together in the project. It's a great way to sample techniques and I hope you have fun with this. Hello everyone. I hope you're all having a great day. I'm Dawn Edwards from Michigan and I'm so happy to be with all of you on Wooly Wednesday. Today I'm going to be sharing a wet felting tutorial for a fun cracked mud technique with you. I love using this cracked mud technique in a wide variety of my felt creations from vessels, hats, and even wall hangings. And I can't wait to see what you create. I think you'll find that this technique is a great way to add visual interest to your felt projects. Our parameters for this project were a seven inch template and one ounce of fiber. I'm going to show you the fibers that we're going to use in our vessel. Again, 19.5 merino top, about an ounce of this. This is just going to be a contrasting um, color that you'll see underneath the um, cracks in the surface texture. And so it's just um, kind of a sage green. Again, 19.5 microns. And then this is just beautiful. And it's a silk paper. And you're going to be able to find instructions on how to make this on um, the Living Felt YouTube channel. Start by dividing our one ounce of wool into two strands. Divide the two strands into a total of six lengths. And then I'm just going to need just a little bit of this contrasting color. So I'm just going to cut these little markings here. You can use any um, design that you want. Just leave a little space in between each of your design elements. For the vessel, the interior is going to be black and that's also going to wind up being the outside. I'm going to use a little of this light green for the contrasting color that you'll see in between the cracks and then we're going to use some of this beautiful silk paper over the top of the vessel cracks. And so I'm going to cut this the same size as my cut out because I primarily want the silk paper to show on this area of the vessel. Next, lay out the two lengths of wool on side A of your template, laying the wool both horizontally and vertically. I've just got a little bit of lukewarm water, a little bit of soap swirled in there. I'm just going to wet this out just a little bit. And using the felting mesh, just going to go over it with a little bit of this olive oil soap just to condense everything. And then I'm just going to do exactly what I did on the first side, coming off the resist a little so that it will probably about three quarters to an inch off the side just to make for a nicely felted vessel. Wet the wool with soapy water.
Flip the vessel over and wrap the wool extensions to the other side. To avoid seams on your vessel, be sure to wrap your wool tightly against the resist and make sure that the wool is butted up nice and close. Place a small amount of contrasting wool over the top of side A, and then wet that out with a little bit of soapy water. Next, place your cutout template over top of this, and then we're going to cover that with the black wool. Flip your vessel over and then cover the template with the last length of your black wool. Flip your vessel back to side A. And then add your silky paper embellishment over top of the cracked mud resist portion. You may also add other embellishing um, fabrics or fibers. Um, one thing that I particularly like are silk hankies. Begin felting. I rub a fair amount with my hands to secure the wool around all of the edges of the resist. The fibers are going to tent up around the cracked mud resist. So pay special attention to really giving those an extra rub just to make sure that the wool is really seated in. Flip your vessel over and then fold in your extensions. Oh, that's so pretty. If I didn't have this um, colored, um, you know, silk paper, I would probably mark this side, especially depending on, you know, if you're doing a thicker vessel, sometimes it gets hard to feel that. Check the edges of your vessel to make sure that they are butted up tightly to the resist. And again, I do this fairly frequently. Next, is our vessel ready to roll? Let's assess what we are looking for. With this particular vessel, I like to make sure, as mentioned, that the cracked mud resist really seems 
um, the wool around it really seems to be seeded down well so that I'm not going to end up with um, pieces that don't adhere well. Um, two, I like to check to make sure that I'm not getting any um, looseness around the edges because I really want to make a seamless vessel. I don't want the wool coming loose on the edges and creating a seam. And I just like to make sure that there's a nice skin on the surface of the vessel. Begin rolling in two minute increments. You may either count or you can set a timer, whichever is easier for you. So I'm going to roll for about two minutes in the beginning stages. I'll increase that as I go, but um, about two minutes and then I will open it up and switch the direction of the rolling. We will open the bubble wrap and turn the vessel a quarter turn at each two minute interval, flipping the vessel from side A to side B and doing the same on either side. I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on Right now, I will increase that as we go. I've rolled um, this vessel in four turns, quarter turns, um, each side. I didn't really count or time. And so in looking at the vessel, I can see that it, it's, a, it's longer um, in this direction. So it's becoming more oval instead of round. And so I'm just going to roll it again in this direction so that it rounds it back out. If I wanted it to be more oval shaped, I would just leave it at this point, but I think I would rather have it a little more round. I'm going to um, just assess the vessel real quickly. And so one thing that I can tell is that my resist is starting to buckle. So the, the wool is shrinking and I'm not able to pull up individual fibers. So it's formed a nice smooth fabric. And so I am pleased with this and ready to cut the top off and continue the process of revealing the um, cracks. Once we have a solid fabric, let's cut the vessel opening. So before I go any further, I'm just going to rub along this side edge. It's not a seam, but it is a trained edge having been butted up close to that resist. So I'm just going to go around with soapy fingers and just rub that out before I move on to cutting the second resist out. And then I'm just going to, with soapy fingers, just heal this back um, of the vessel cut edge. I'll do the front after I cut the embedded resist out. And just apply some pressure to that. Next, take your time and begin cutting the channels of the cracked mud template. You'll want to really take your time in doing this. If you rush, you're liable to cut out one of your um, surface mud 
pieces. So, so really take your time. And I kind of feel my way um, along those channels using a wood skewer, lifting up a little bit with that um, wood skewer so that I can clip with very sharp scissors um, right in the center of that channel. So I've cut out all of the um, embedded resist and I'm going to ne need to heal these um, cut edges. So I'm going to go along with soapy fingers and give all of those edges a rub. And then I'm going to continue um, felting the vessel more. It still needs to be harder. So I'll go ahead and um, heal all of these edges and then move on to the next step. It's okay to trim away excess fibers. Take extra time in this portion of the process. It's a little bit fiddly, um, but the extra time that you invest in this portion will make for a more successful outcome. Rinse thoroughly. I like to use both hot and cold water in my rinsing, making sure to get all of the soap out of my piece. Now that the vessel is out of the resist, we're going to move on to the fulling stage. Fulling just being shrinking. I have used rubbing and rolling in my hands as part of the fulling process. I've also used um, bubble wrap, um, rolling the vessel on itself in the bubble wrap, um, rolling in a dry towel, and also rolling in a bamboo mat. Optionally, you may want to add a splash of white vinegar to your rinse water just to make extra sure of ridding all of the soap from your piece and also to return your wool to the proper pH. Blot the water out of your vessel with a dry towel and give one more shaping with your hands. Insert a balloon and inflate and then shape your vessel again by hand or with any special shaping tools that you may have. Kitchen items work very well also. I use a wooden spoon quite frequently. And lastly, set your piece out to dry overnight. Once your vessel has dried overnight, it's time to remove the balloon. I gotta this. Pull it out. I'm really happy with the outcome of the um, cracked mud vessel. Um, I love the size of it that I can just hold it in my hands and I'm really pleased with the um, color that we achieved using the silky paper. Um, so I think it feels like it's well finished, well felted, and I'll possibly just shape the bottom just a little bit more so that it stands um, a little less wobbly, but otherwise I'm quite pleased with the vessel. We don't necessarily approach things the same way. Mm -hmm. Even when we felt our two vessels, we have like, for example, a different method of wetting out mm -hmm. and adding soap. Right. And so it's a reminder for me mm -hmm. that that even it, along the lines of let's get technical, it's not the methods as much as it is the outcome. The outcome, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just wonderful to to be reminded that there's lots of different ways to get to the end result. We both shared stories of mm -hmm. how much water or too little water or too much water right. and dealing with water. And so we just want to, you know, encourage us all, I guess, to be open minded. Open minded. Sampling, That's, felting yes, with other that people. Is so true. Be yes. open minded, focus mm -hmm. on the end result. And right. I for one am grateful just to have that reminder. Yep, me too. Yeah. <laughs>
It's been a, it's been a lot of fun, and and I think we both found that it just really was a lot more inspiring mm -hmm. to make a vessel. I felt more right. creative making a vessel than just making a flat piece. It was a really fun process for us, and we hope that if you uh, make yours too, that you'll share some of your oh, sample vessels with us. We yeah. would love that. We'd love yeah. to see them. <laughs> Thanks for letting us share, and we hope it's been fun. It's definitely been fun for us. It certainly has. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all. Thanks so much for watching y'all. Let us know your favorite takeaway down below. Let us know what colors you would use or underneath colors you would use on your cracked mud. And we hope you'll share yours with us. Until next time, happy felting.